Times sure have changed, haven't they? Computers, video games, endless electronic wonders. A lot different than the toys I had when I was a kid. We didn't have to deal with the perplexities of programming or figure out the intricacies of the latest video game cartridges. No, our toys were a lot simpler. We had things like slinkies and spud guns. They weren't too complicated. All you had to do was load up and shoot people with a potato. <laughs> now things move so fast these days. Yeah, things were a lot simpler when I was a kid, and the world moved at a slower pace. But for the kids who grew up back then, it was a time they'll never forget. One of the most wonderful things about that era were the kids' shows we used to watch on TV. They weren't just a mass of cartoons back to back. They were personal. And to the kids who watched those shows, day in and day out, they tried to instill a sense of worthwhile values. And the hosts of those shows were our friends. We felt like we actually knew them. They were people to look up to, to trust, and to have fun with. I'd like to invite you to come back with me and take a look at some of those kid shows we had back then. And I'd like you to meet some of the kid show hosts, those weekday heroes who helped us learn and grow. The world of 50s television. Kids sure were enamored of that little box. The shows look a little outdated today, but boy, we couldn't get enough of them. Howdy Doody, Coop LaFran and Ollie, Beanie and Cecil, Captain Kangaroo. Those shows were the epics of 50s TV. But the real troopers, the real unsung heroes of children's programming were the local kids show hosts who had to come up with a new program every day, five days a week. And Los Angeles was blessed with some of the most popular and beloved hosts anywhere in the country. If you would have asked the kids who their favorite birthday clown was, the answer would have been a very loud and unanimous... Get up! Get up! Get up! Yeah! Get up! I'm Duckle, I'm Duckle, I'm Duckle the birthday clown. I'm Duckle, yes Duckle, I'm the happiest guy in town. It's playtime, it's playtime, we're gonna have lots of fun. It's always a gay time, from a work it's never done. Now Christmas comes up once a year, but I'm here every day. With a birthday cake to celebrate, the best of day in every way. <laughs> That's the bald-headedest boy I ever saw in my life, <laughs> Hey, whose birthday is it? The most important day in a child's life is their birthday. It's theirs. It doesn't belong to anybody else. We tried to create the clown as the theme for birthdays. In other words, if you're going to have a birthday, the clown is your symbol, like the Easter bunny is for Easter time, Santa Claus for uh, Christmas time. There should be a symbol for children's birthday. It's their day, you see. Why not a clown? Chucko began life as a clown in the suburb of Long Beach, California. With a unique merry-go-round on wheels, which he called a merry-go-beale, Chucko began to do all of the neighborhood birthday parties. He became so popular that soon he was doing seven parties a day, seven days a week, all over Southern California. In fact, his popularity rose so much that one day he received a call to come down to Channel 7 Studios and audition for a new children's show that was being planned. We auditioned that day with 27 other clowns. And I got in the car, we're coming home, and I said, hey, forget it. These people are all pros, they know what they're doing. Uh, I don't think we got a chance. We got home, the phone's ringing, it says, turn on and come back, you got the job. Good morning. Good morning. Your name Alice? No. That's you, not Alice. That Barbara Ann? No. I, uh, Joe? No. Bill? When we first started on television, they used the children as props. Come in, do the show, kick them out the gate. I said, this will stop immediately. I say go, you see. And when all of you take a bite, right? I see I pass These people are guests in our home. We will have cake and ice cream afterwards, and we gave goodies like Matt. One, two, 
Are you hungry or something? We were an early morning show. These people got up at 4 o'clock in the morning and drove from San Bernardino to bring their props into Hollywood to do the show. And it was unfair to treat them as a piece of goods. They were people. One more, please, sir. We've got a young lady here who's exceptionally hungry. <laughs> Chuck O's show was ad lib. The kids were the stars. And this was live TV. You never knew what was going to happen next. I'm doing a Marco dog food commercial. I'm holding the can like this, and it's a tight shot of the can, and I'm reading the idiot sheets and giving a good pitch. And I feel this tug on the costume like this, like again like that. And I, I just couldn't, couldn't hold back. I set the can of dog food down. Norm picked up on what it was and darlied back. And here disclosed a little girl, probably three, half, four, maybe, maybe five years old, the cutest little dress you ever saw in your life. And she's pulling on the clown's costume. So I said to her, Sugar, what is it? She said, Chucko, I got to go potty. What could you do? I stopped, hollered for Mama, let her off camera, and the camera hung on to a blank stage while I took her over to Mama. Mama took care of things, came back, picked up the can, and said, now, where were we? Well, get rid of it. Atta girl, there it goes, OK? The music stops, and you get stuck with it on your head when the music stops. On Channel 7, we were seven years, seven months, and seven days. I miss it because it was such a good time, you know. I think that tradition is being carried on with my son. He's doing it. Well, I've been clowning since about the age of five. Uh, I still remember the Santa Claus Lane parades doing the junior character, Perfect Shadow. Currently, uh, we're doing a lot of home birthday parties, uh, company picnics. Did one this last weekend with about 2,000 people. Brought a lot of happiness with people that are 30, 40 years old that were raised by Chucko Sr. A lot of times they, as I'm sure many people do, say, gee, I wish I was a kid again. And when they see Chucko is still alive and cooking and going, Many times I see a twinkle in the eye, and for a moment, or maybe for the whole show, they are a kid again. For seven years, kids couldn't wait to be part of Chucko's birthday show every day. But then, it was decided that the show's format should change. They wanted the clown to be a host of cartoons. And I said, a clown cannot act with just a cartoon. So it was a mutual agreement that we said, I can't work as a clown and stand here and pitch commercials. And I said, I've got to have the kids. All across the country, local hosts had an incredible variety of occupations. There were Deputy Dan's, Fireman Fred's, and Conductor Carl's. But Los Angeles had one of the best in Engineer Bill, who with his warm and winning ways had kids tuned into his roundhouse every day without fail. And to anybody who grew up in L.A. in the 50s, Engineer Bill created four words that will live on forever. Red light. Green light. Engineer Bill saying, welcome to the Channel 9 Roundhouse. At that time, Sheriff John was extremely successful with his uh, lunchtime birthday brigade. KHJ decided that they would do a Ranger Ed. I went upstairs to management and I asked uh, if I could suggest an idea to them because I had been a trained hobbyist. And I, I had been in the business long enough to know that hobby shows uh, really don't make it for very long. And the thing that was missing in my concept of the Engineer Bill show was the cartoons. Well, the cartoons were there. The idea was there. It's a story that's been repeated time after time after time, being at the right place at the right time with an idea. Here at the, round the whole challenge today. of the show to me What's was to see if I could take say, a youngster you? from the lobby that's in the front girl. of all What's of the lights name, man? to see if within one hour I could uncover the spark of his personality. Why did they call you Corky? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. Corky Kemp. That's kind of cute. How old are you? Six. And do you, where do you go to school? Um, Saunders School. And what grade are you in? First grade. Your teacher's name? Miss Fisher. Well, how about giving her a big hello, huh? Hello, Miss Fisher. That's the stuff. 
we all made market appearances in those days, Chuck O and Sheriff John and the whole works. But personal contact right on the ground, shaking hands, meeting the kids and saying hi to their moms and dads. But it was all a, a beautiful time. I'd pass Chuck O on the way and uh, old little Oscar, of course, with his Wienermobile. We'd see each other on Saturdays all over the place. I figured out that I have had the opportunity of saying hello to about five million California kids. In order to be on the show, their names had to be drawn, but then they also had to build a, a railroad model box car, maybe it was a refrigerator car, maybe it was a tank car, but they had to build that and, and bring it to the studio with them that night and we would show it and sort of critique it and evaluate the construction job. One night, one of the youngsters came in with, if it wasn't the world's worst, it was the second world's worst model building project I had ever seen. And I, regardless, uh, it was great if he did it. And I said, did you do this? And he said, no, no. I said, well, did your father do it for you? He said, no, no. I said, well, who did it? my father's secretary. Oh, can you imagine? The boss says, uh, Gertrude, my kid's going to be on Engineer Bill's show tomorrow night. Will you take this home and build it and bring it back in the morning? <laughs> you both had help, I think, didn't you? Yes. And who helped you, Susan? My father. Did you supervise? <gasps> oh, no, you're supposed to say yes. You did, didn't you? Well, you looked at it when he finished it, didn't you? Well, sure, you supervised. You inspected it. Absolutely. That's One of the most popular segments of Engineer Bill's show was Little Mo, the Bad Habit Buster. Oh, Little Mo was the tiny little engine that could. You remember the story about the little engine that could? I think I can. I think I can. Bad, the bad habit! I hope I can, 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 I hope I can. I hope I can. I hope I can. I hope it's not going to be easy. Promise again. All this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I will eat anything that is on my plate, and I will get rid of that appetite bandit. By Friday, wham, that habit was broken. Now, Susan, in a good, loud, clear voice so everybody can hear it, will you explain to all of the boys and girls how this red light, green light game is played? And if it isn't loud enough, I'll also have Corky do it. On the green light, you go on the red light, you stop, or no engineer will ever run on a red light. And you'd be surprised how many parents were delighted that they could find a way to make their children drink their milk. It was that reverse psychology, you know, don't you dare drink your milk while the red light is on. But when it's green, you got to, or else you're not playing the game right. Red light. Green light. Red light. Red light. Green light. Green light. Red light. Red light. Oh, I've been sick. <laughs> There's a time for everything, you know. We were do-gooders. I was told once there's no more room for do-gooders on the air, and it just quashed me. I spent 18 years on local television five days a week. And to me, the golden years, the years that I consider the most gratifying to me are the years that I spent as Engineer Bill. With a big all aboard for another cartoon. All aboard! Who's that coming down the track? Who's that puffin' smoke so black? Who's at the throttle? Woo-woo, that's Engineer Bill. <laughs> perhaps the best example of a host of host values and entertain at the same time was Sheriff John, who had one of the longest-running children's programs in history. For 18 years, kids couldn't wait to tune into the Lunch Brigade and share their lunchtime with their friend, Sheriff John. Come on now, laugh and be happy, and the world will laugh with you. When people see you smiling, they can't help smiling too. We'd come in and I'd come through the door, sing and laugh and be happy, and then go to the checklist, and, and then the bulletin board for pictures about safety, and then over and do the pledge to the flag. Sheriff John's lunch brigade hit the Los Angeles airwaves in 1952, and the show was an immediate success. In fact, it was so popular that after his first year on TV, he won an Emmy for the Outstanding Children's Program and Personality. I was so surprised because we were at the Palladium and uh, I was nominated and uh, when my name was called, I didn't know what else to say and I looked at all this audience of 
John Ford, who had been given an award for directing, and, and other people in, in the television industry, all in, in tuxedos. And I said, I hope you all brushed your teeth. All right, want to take a look at our bulletin board again. We got some fine pictures. This is from Stephen Dwayne Pink. Oh, he was on birthday list. I remember the name. And there he is right there. He says, D -d don't fool with sleeping pills. Do not keep pills in reach of children. And don't walk down the street or run with a ruler or pencil in your mouth. Very good. That's I wish I had saved all the drawings. And I remember the little stick drawing of a mother with a little frizzy hair. She was falling over and faint and the caption the little boy put on it with the bathtub was never put a snake in the bathtub without telling your mother. And you know that he had done that. Put another candle on my birthday cake. We're gonna bake a birthday cake. Put another candle on my birthday cake. I'm another year old today. I'm going... Well, best wishes to you right now for birthdays and belated. We have Jay Smyrie or Smyre. When you figure that Sheriff John read about 100 names a day, five days a week, 52 weeks a year for 18 years, he made an awful lot of L.A. birthday kids pretty happy. And frequently, he'd see the same names reoccur as the years went by. Lisa Rendazzo. I saw them getting older on the list as I got older <laughs> reading the names. <laughs> We'd go out on the appearances. The, the cutest thing was a little you know, fella came up one day and looked up at me and said, how did you get out of the box? And the mother and I, I said, what did you say? And he said, how did you get out of the box? And I said, I just realized something. In his home, I'm in a box. Oh, what kind of a day is it? Well, we've lost that contact a little bit. If a little fella in the hospital says, I would like Sheriff John to come and see me in the hospital and say hello and take a picture, which I could do, but I think we've lost the personal, day-to-day -day television. And because it was personal, Sheriff John was able to touch many people's lives. My mother wrote, waited about a year to write me to tell me that a little boy named Paul had, had this disease and was near death. And uh, she said that uh, in the letter uh, that he had a little fever that one night and the daddy put him in the tub to cool his body down and was washing him off and he had tears and little Paul looked up and said why are you crying daddy don't cry and he said you should be like er, sing laugh and be happy with me and and daddy didn't know the words but he sang it in the tub about the words to laugh and be happy and uh, she said I waited a year to write this letter uh, little Paul passed away and she said they uh, uh, I wanted you to know that at his funeral, they read the, the pastor read the words to laugh and be happy. And she said, I just wanted to write you and thank you for the many hours of happiness you gave for little Paul. When the sheriff's show finally went off the air in 1970, 18 years after it had begun, the golden age of children's television ended with it. Come to the end of the program and the end of an era, as they say, in our uh, uh, mahogany row, and it is the end of an era. Believe me, we've been with you many, many times, many years in your home, and thank you for all your attendance and, and for joining with us. And so there's a lot of people say that it was fun, and, and we stood for positive things in that time, and maybe that's why they want to go back. And so like the words we had in this morning, aloha, adios, adieu, and God be with you till we meet again. Bye for now. Things change and the world has a way of moving on. The innocent age of the 50s and early 60s made way for more turbulent times. But though that particular era has passed, there are thousands and thousands of baby boomers who will never, ever forget it. And they'll never forget those kitty show hosts they grew up with. Come on now, laugh and be happy.
Get rid of worry in a hurry, chase the blues away. Just laugh and be happy all the live long day. Yeah, hey. The world's so complicated. Things move by so fast. A kid doesn't have very long to be a kid before his childhood flies right past in a maze of computers and a haze of microchips somehow it slips away but it was simpler than and we didn't have a care all the simple games we play and the comics that we'd share and the heroes we looked up to who helped us learn and grow.